Well, welcome to part two. As you saw in the first part, got the boat out, got the boat back, started cleaning it and pulling some stuff off of it. Uh, in the second video, I've done, I've cleaned the boat. Uh, we go over the engines that I've uh, picked up. I uh, removed the transom, removed the steering cable and reinstalled the new steering cable in it. Um, removed the uh, receiver and the safety chains and reinstalled the new ones. Uh, I've also done the uh, trailer light wiring. It's all complete and functional now. I uh, changed the cable and hook on the winch as well as freed it up so now it works quite a bit better. Um, I've also built a new transom, cut it out, fitted, drilled the holes for it, sanded it, and sealed it. Is any of it done correctly? No. Will it work? Absolutely. So, for part two, enjoy. As the sun sets on uh, D3, the only real thing that I got done was power washing it out a bit. I did say I wasn't going to clean it, and really it isn't that clean, but it's a start. It's a lot of loose debris, but now that I've loosened it, I can vacuum it up. And once I'm basically done doing my work, uh, I'll be hand scrubbing the entire boat's interior and exterior very thoroughly and uh, washing it off better. But I got a lot of loose stuff broken up and got quite a bit of the uh, mess in the interior cleaned up. I will have to sand off all this uh, excess corrosion so when I put my new transom in it will uh, seal. I did pick up some lights. I do have a coupler. I forgot to get the safety chains but I also got a new cable so I'll be hopefully doing that. I'll have to stop and get the safety chains tomorrow and uh, probably tomorrow as well I will be getting the plywood for the transom. Well, I've picked up myself some uh, goodies. Obviously, you've seen the tires. I got some Thompson water seal. I know it's not the right stuff. I'm going to get backlash for not using marine grade plywood and the right stuff, but I've had good luck with this stuff and for as long as it lasts, it's not a big deal for me to have to change it again. I'll be keeping it under cover, so it'll last a lot longer that way. Also got myself some um, clothesline cable, and this has got the galvanized uh, steel core. The stuff that was in it was uh, had some sort of a nylon core or plastic, so got a bit of an upgrade that way. And I got uh, lucky. I uh, found a guy named Jeff, local. Uh, he's also a aficionado of 
these uh, old boats, this uh, brand and type specifically. And uh, I ended up picking both these motors up for $450. Uh, this one here was on his boat and was running and he just upgraded to a four stroke. And this was a parts motor that he had uh, with it. So I guess I got one good running driving motor and a running spare as well. Um, probably will both need a little bit of a tune up from sitting because uh, I've been sitting for a couple years and uh, luckily he had a, a set of controls as well that are for this motor. So I'm gonna end up uh, using these uh, or using this motor hopefully and the controls and the wiring for it in the boat. Uh, so yeah, I'll uh, be getting these pulled out shortly and uh, put on my stands uh, or at least the one that I'm going to use on a stand and then this motor and the motor that's sitting on the uh, cherry picker over there will probably uh, both be put on my spare stands and put in storage um, for hopefully ever so I'll never have to use them uh, and this one will be good but in the case that I do need to use it I do have quite a lot of spare parts because I believe that these are basically the same as what that motor is are very very similar they're all johnson's even though this is a uh, branded as a gale but they're both 40 horsepower for uh, two strokes so yeah <laughs> saw I have welded the receiver on to the tongue cut the old one off and welded the new one on I've welded my safety chains on off camera uh, and I have also wired the uh, boat with all its lights and hooked it up to my test box and everything works just as it should 
So it's all strung through the same way it was uh, how I found it. It's got new corner markers, new rear tail lights. Everything has uh, been uh, buck connected and uh, heat shrinked. So it should last a while. Um, there really isn't much left to do on the boat. I did actually inspect these slides and I'm not gonna replace them. Uh, they're actually solid, so uh, I'm just gonna leave them alone for now. Uh, something I could always do down the road. The last thing I gotta do is tires and uh, bearings and possibly wheel studs, but I'm not sure yet on that. Uh, I also got my winch and uh, winch cable and loop on. This was actually for a winch for an ATV. Now I didn't uh, actually fasten the cable in any way. I just looped it through itself a couple times, but I don't plan on having to use the full length of the winch to winch the boat onto the trailer. It is a folding trailer, uh, so that can be easier or harder. Uh, I've never actually used one, so it might be more difficult for myself, but I, I know for sure I can get the truck back right up into the water without having any issues and get the boat unloaded. So not too worried about that. And I've lubricated it all up so it's free and clear good to go um i took the controls off washed them and because uh, they were just full of mud and put them back together and actually uh surprisingly the cables uh the control cables that came with the boat are uh they freed up and they are working uh decent enough i think they'll loosen up a bit more as uh, i use it more but those are been They've been put back into place and now I'm just trying to figure out where to put the controls. There was this wedge of wood down in here that mounted the controls down like this, but when they're mounted and the uh, lever here is forward, your uh, fingers actually can't clear the, uh, the controller with the shifter in place. So the way it was mounted was like that and you can see how close it is to the steering wheel. There's another set of holes up here. And I think I'm going to mount it up there and that gives my hand a lot more room and less likely to wrap my knuckles on the uh, forward and reverse selector. Uh, so I think that's the plan. I'm just going to nut and bolt this through here and I think I'm actually going to put some screws into the original wood uh, just as an extra little piece of uh, reinforcement rigidity. Uh, and that'll still give enough room for the uh, cable to pass through without getting uh, or interfering with anything. Um, I also did go to the store and pick up a bunch of other stuff. I got all the hardware to mount the transom. I know it's not the correct hardware, but it's what I can get uh, easily. And I feel as though that's probably stronger than what came out of it. Um, and I brought some other tools so I can cut the transom out, get it fitted up. Then I will uh, sand it, coat it, and I'll reinstall it once my friend comes by and uh, take weld that. Um, those two broken pieces of aluminum back on. Well, as you saw, I tried fitting the cutting and fitting the rear transom piece. 
pretty much knew that I wasn't going to be able to get it in in one piece without having to dismantle the boat. I know the purists' heads are probably exploding right now because I'm sure there is a way to do it, and I didn't do that. And I know having a seam on the transom is probably the dumbest possible thing to do, but in my defense, there'll be four connection points here. This will be connected on the back here. One solid plate here, and I will probably be putting some form of a construction adhesive not one that will uh, unadhere with water contact in this joint and uh, attach this joint tightly together with a construction adhesive. And I do believe that it will hold. Uh, I don't really have any concerns. And if it does uh, decide to want to stress, uh, then maybe I'll have to go at this the correct way. But as for right now, I'm, if you can't already tell, a bit of a hack. And I like quick results. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. You can see, you know, there's aluminum protruding where there should be the wood kind of coming up and following this contour. The piece that I had to use was in very bad shape, but luckily I had something so I can get a general shape. And uh, overall, my mark was pretty close. Um, these don't line up perfectly at the bottom. They're actually offset by, oh, I'm going to guess probably a quarter of an inch. Um, but I'll take that into consideration when I put the next piece in that I'll step it a little bit. And maybe I'll even glue that piece to these as well. Um, after I've obviously treated it and just left the edges where they're going to be glued raw and not treated. Um, I don't plan on storing the boat outside, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but now that I know where it is, I'm going to sink a couple extra screws in there so it doesn't move and then get my drill bit for my bolts and drill through this way. Then I'll know that this is all lined up good. And when I put my next panel on the back, I can drill through this way and get all the holes lined up correctly. And uh, then I should be able to sand it all out, make it nice and uh, uh, uniform. Uh, as far as the finish goes, and then I'm going to treat it and uh, uh, let it set until I can get these welded. And once they're welded, I'll be able to install that, hang the motor, and there won't be much left to do after that. Just get the motor in, wire it, fuel, um, obviously as far as wiring all the lights and starter, etc. Um, got to do the bearings on the boat, and then maybe some upholstery. I probably won't do the upholstery before I do the first test ride. Um, but maybe I will. It just depends on what stops me from progressing forward more. And like that, one badly built transom is done. Other than, of course, finishing everything out. It's cut. It's fit. It's drilled. It's good to go. Total butchery. But... I'm not really harming the boat at all. It's just a piece of wood. I can always make a better one. The holes were already there. And so it's not that big of a deal to just do it again. If I got to TIG weld and sand down holes that are incorrect, if I ever actually want to do a proper restoration, I'll have to go through that effort. But as for now, I want to be on the water. So pieces in there. Does it fit good? No. Does it look good? No. Will it work? I hope so. Um, but now that it's actually on there, I'm even more confident. I think she'll hold. Now to remove it, sand it, and put some sealant on there. And uh, reassembly. I am gonna have to modify some of these uh, bolts as her the handles they have like a tapered fit and these are just got a square end on them to kind of lock into place i'm gonna to have to grind that down um so they're not so inclined to actually damage those handles because i've been told they're not easy to find <clears throat> and uh 
yeah, that's pretty much, I'll only have to modify about four bolts, hopefully, and the rest will go together just fine. I may have to modify several others uh, in places where they're just butting up against the uh, hull, uh, like these ones and these. So I might be modifying more than I think. Um, that being said, I kind of wanted to replicate the look of a rivet. Uh, instead of having a fastener head on there, I wanted to just have a nice smooth button. Uh, so I think I'll have my work cut out for me in shaping these a little bit uh, nicer, trying to at least turn down the uh, edge so that... Um, <laughs> So this is quarter inch and I'll see if I can grind this down. So this is also quarter inch and just the pan head will uh, protrude past the hull. And that'll just go through like that. still that don't need to be there install the motor do the wiring and a few other odds and ends hopefully by the end of part three we'll be ready for part four which will be the first test drive if not there might be another part in between that but i have my doubts hopefully the motor doesn't give me any difficulties but we'll see so thank you for watching look out for part three hopefully in about a week